Welcome to another live session of uh, Crash Course in Biology. Today we will discuss the animal kingdom. So we are going to the first question. Animals are classified according to the gemlays formed in their gastrula. Select the correct combination of animals corresponding to the gastrula given. So we can see that gastrula that is embryonic structure within this embryonic structure you can see the germ layers according to the germ layers animals can be classified into two categories diploblastic or organisms and uh, triploblastic organisms or diploblastic organization and triploblastic organization in the case of diploblastic organization you can see it is in picture a here in the first set only two germ layers you can see the outer ectoderm and inner endoderm and in between there is a jelly like layer called mesoglia you got it so here diploblastic animals are phylum nidaria and tunophora these two phyla they have diploblastic organization then triploblastic organization mean there will be three germ layers ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm so when three gem layers are present that is triploblastic organization starting from phylum platyel mindus to chordata you can see triploblastic organization now according to coelom animals are classified what is a coelom coelom is a true body cavity it is a true body cavity which is derived from mesoderm and also lined by mesoderm and here Animals are classified into coelomates, pseudocoelomates and coelomates. What are acoelomates? They have no coelomatode. In the case of phylum platyhelminthes, even though they have three gem layers, they are not forming a coelom. So it is in picture C here in the second set. Now pseudocoelomates. Pseudocoelomates, uh, they have a false coelom. Or in the mesoderm is scattered to form pouches. And there is a false body cavity or pseudo silo in Ashel Mindus group. And in silomates, a true silo is formed as in picture A here in the second set. Picture A, silomates from Anirida to Cordata, all are silomates. So you should keep in mind the different phyla having the character of silom, uh, whether silom is absent or whether it is pseudo silo or whether they have a, a true silo so the animal groups you have to uh, remember and also the different examples belonging to that animal group also you should keep in your mind then only you can answer this question now here coming to this question you can see here first picture belongs to silo means a then picture b belongs to pseudo silo means and picture c belongs to a silo means so here the answer will be option A here because uh, Hirudinaria that is an analyte. Analytes have a true coelom. Then Ucheraria. Ucheraria is uh, a round worm or it is coming under Ashel in this group. So it will have a pseudo coelom. Then Fasciola is a flat worm. It will have a coelomate condition. So answer here will be option A here. Now coming to the next question. Choose the correct option that matches organism, its class, general character. So here, two organisms are given. You know, one is uh, nevis and other is leech. To get an idea about the classification of annelids, annelids are classified into three groups, polychaeta, oligochaeta and hirudinia. In polychaeta, nevis is an example. They have both setae and parapodia. Oligochaetes, uh, they have only setae. Earthworms are coming under oligochaeta group. Okay. Then, hirudinia. In the case of uh, hirudinia, leech is an example for uh, hirudinia group. And in the case of uh, hirudinia group, you cannot see setae or parapodia. So, here... These are the three groups uh, coming under phylum Annelida. Right. Now coming back to the question. 
when we move on to the question once again we have the question here we have a set of options here which is the correct option first example is nearies and second one is uh, hirudinaria okay or the leech so the correct answer will be nearies belonging to polychaeta group they have parapodia and setae and hirudinaria that is coming under hirudinia group and in the case of uh, hirudinia group in the case of that hirudinia group you can see the anterior and posterior circles so the correct answer will be option d here okay now we move on to the next question which of the following is correct description of the notochord so notochord you know it is applicable for chordates in the case of chordates you can see three characters what are the three characters of uh, chordates chordates are having a notochord which is present on their dorsal side and it is applicable for uh, their embryonic period at least and uh, nerve cord is present in the case of chordates it is also in the dorsal side it is hollow tubular okay and uh, in the case of chordates it will be non ganglionated and they have gill slits also so these characters you have to keep in mind when you answer this question this diagram is very important they will also ask questions for labeling correct labeling of this diagram so this diagram is very very important now coming to this question again which is the correct answer correct description of notochord in the textbook a clear definition is given notochord is mesodermally derived it is derived from the mesoderm germ layer it is a rod like structure and it is formed on the dorsal side not on the ventral side it is on the dorsal side during embryonic development it is not present always and it is present only in some animals not in all animals those animals which possess not a cord they are called chordates so here the correct answer will be option d here now coming to question select the false statement from the following again it is a question about uh, not a cord so here before answering this question you should have a clear idea about the classification of uh, uh, chordates chordates are having three groups here you can see here urochordata cephalochordata and vertebrata urochordata that is a subphylum urochordata here notochord is present only in the larval tail salpa doliolum etc they are coming under urochordata group and cephalochordata here they have a notochord which will persist throughout their life brachiostoma or amphioxus is coming under this group and vertebrates they have notochord uh, which is replaced into a vertebral column when it becomes the adult so here they are classified into three subphyla so this idea of uh, classification of chordates you should remember and also urochordates and cephalochordates they are primitive chordates they have primitive characters they are that is why they are called proto chordates also now coming to the back to question here which is a correct which is a false statement you have to pick okay which is a false statement not about not about a stiff flexible skeletal rod lying ventral to nerve cord that is correct because when you uh, see that diagram Uh, notochord is ventral side of uh, nerve cord nerve cord is on the upper side below that you can see the notochord so notochord compared to the nerve cord it is ventral compared to the nerve cord for the animal it is on the dorsal side so this is a correct statement then non vertebrate chordates include urochordates and cephalochordates this is also true they are protochordates in cephalochordates notochord is uh, present throughout their life this is also true then fourth one siona salpa doliolum there are examples for urochordates this is also a true statement then the last statement brachiostoma true notochord is absent but gill slits are present this is wrong brachiostomes uh, or cephalochordates they have a true notochord and uh, it is persisting throughout their life so only five is wrong here so correct answer will be option d now we move on to poikilotherms animals so you should know about poikilotherm and homeotherm what is poikilotherm and homeotherm homeotherms animals they are warm blooded poikilotherms animals they are 
cold blooded homeotomous uh, warm blooded mean in among chordates uh, birds and mammals or aves and mammals they are warm blooded and amphibian uh, fishes amphibians and reptiles they are cold blooded so questions are coming from this idea from this concept always uh, uh, you will have to pick um, the old one or you will have to identify a homeothermous animal or a poikilothermous animal so a lot of questions are coming based on the warm blooded and cold blooded nature so coming back to the question once again poikilothermous animals are poikilothermous animals in this list will be option a because salamandra or the salamander it is a tailed amphibian it is a, a poikilothermous animal chilon chilon is a tortoise which is marine turtle, marine turtle and tyrophyllum it is uh, actually belonging to fishes group so here option A is our correct answer what about other options tyropus is a flying fox corvus uh, is a bird then testudo is a land tortoise so they are not, uh, that is not a full list of uh, poikilothermous animals tyropus and corvus they are homeothermous columba, livia that is a bird, warm-blooded, bankyrus, crate or a reptile, it is cold-blooded, hyla, it is again cold-blooded, macropus is kangaroo, it is warm-blooded, ratus, the rat is warm-blooded, crocodilus is cold-blooded. So, a lot of mixed type of options are given. Our correct answer for all belonging to poikilothermous animals will be option A here. Coming to our next question, prototherians are, you know, mammals are classified into two groups, oviparous and viviparous. Monotremata order, it is that of uh, oviparous animals like platypus and echidna. Platypus and echidna, echidna is tachyglossus and uh, platypus is uh, ornithorhynchus, that is a scientific name. So here, most of others are viviparous. Other groups like Metatheria and Eutheria, pouched mammals and uh, placental mammals, they are all viviparous. So, coming back to this question, so here the correct answer will be option C here, Tachyglossus and Ornithorhynchus. Now, coming to next question, in contrast to flatworms, the roundworms show. You know, roundworms or phylum Aschelmindus, they have a pseudocylome. So, here you can see the organization, diploblastic and triploblastic organization that we have already discussed. So, we have set of options here. Absent, here we have to choose that option which is found in roundworms but not in flatworms. So, absence of body cavity, it is applicable for flatworms. Bilateral symmetry, it is applicable for both. Radial symmetry, it is applicable for none of them. Okay. Then presence of pseudocele, it is applicable for roundworms. Diploblastic feature, it is not applicable for both. So here, our answer will be only four. That is, a, that is the only feature belonging to roundworms. So correct answer is option D. Now two common characters found in centipede. Two common characters found in centipede. You know what are centipedes? They are media ports. We will go to the classification of phylum arthropoda phylum arthropoda is having four classes crustacea mediapoda insecta and arachnida you can see the features here crustaceans uh, they have uh, a calcareous uh, a shell outer covering not a calcareous shell a chitinous uh, covering is the chitinous exoskeleton is the more than four pairs of jointed legs examples are prawns and crabs then myriapods, they are many legged animals, uh, centipedes and millipedes belong to this group. And uh, insects, insects are having three pairs of uh, legs and uh, they have two pairs of wings. That is the main feature. Their body divided into head, thorax and abdomen in the case of insects. What about arachnids? In the case of arachnids, body divided into head and cephalothorax. Spiders and scorpions, they belong to this arachnida group. They have four pairs of legs or they have eight legs. So, that is a classification. So, here, when you answer this question, two characters common in centipede or in mediapoda group, 
Our answer will be option C because that is a common character for all arthropods. That is why we are picking this option. What about book lungs? Book lungs are found only in arachnids, and they are absent in arachnids. Okay. Then compound eyes and uh, anal cerci. Compound eyes are applicable for crustaceans and insects. Anal cerci for cockroaches. Uh, you will learn it in another chapter. Then green glands are applicable for crustaceans or they are the antenna glands helping for excretion in them. Trachea for uh, respiration. So correct answer is option C here. Now radial symmetry is observed in radial symmetry. Regarding symmetry, what you can say? Nidarians and tinophores, uh, they have radial symmetry. Then echinoderms. The adults are radially symmetrical, but their larvae are bilaterally symmetrical. So in this question, they are mentioning whether the symmetry is present in them. Okay. Actually, echinoderms are both radial and bilateral. So here, our answer will be B, C and E. Okay. We will have the slide of uh, symmetry here. Okay. This first one uh, is showing radial symmetry. The other one, that of crab, is showing bilateral symmetry. So now, coming to the answer, our answer option, correct option will be op option D here, B, C and E. Next, biradial symmetry. What is biradial symmetry? When animals are having both radial and bilateral symmetry, they are called biradially symmetrical. This is for uh, tinophores. And tinophores, as all of you know, they have no nidoblast or stinging cells. Stinging cells are applicable for nidarians. So here we have a picture of nidoblast. In this picture, you can see nidoblast having different functions. You know the functions of nidoblast. It is helping for defense, food capture and also for attachment to a substratum it will help. So here, nidoblast sometimes it will have a toxic substance in it called hypnotoxin. With the help of which it will paralyze the prey. So here nidoblast is applicable for uh, nidarians only. So if coming back to the question. Radial, by radial symmetry and lack of uh, nidoblast. That is character of tinophores. The two tinophores in this uh, among options will be tinoplana and bero. So answer option C. Hydra. Hydra is a nidarian. Starfish is echinoderm. Again, starfish is given. Sea anemone is uh, belonging to the Nidaria group. Then Aurelia is a jellyfish. Nidaria, Paramecium, it is a unicellular animal. Okay. So here, our answer option C. Now coming to next question. Which of the following is not a characteristic feature of subphylum vertebrata? For subphylum vertebrata, which is not a character, you should have a clear idea about the vertebrate classification. Vertebrates are classified like this, Agnatha, Gnathostomata, then Gnathostomata is further divided into pieces and tetrapods and again there are different classes. How many classes are there in uh, subphylum vertebrata? Altogether seven classes are there because there is Cyclostomata, Chondrichthys, Ostichthys and uh, Amphibians, Reptiles, Apes and Mammals. So altogether seven major classes are coming under vertebrata group. Okay. So coming back to this question, which of the following is not a characteristic feature of subphylum vertebrata? Vertebrates are having tubular nerve cord and it is on the dorsal side. So that is a character. In the question it is given which is not a character. Okay. So you have to identify which is not a feature. Okay. Then option B, ventral muscular heart. It is always ventral. For vertebrates or for all chordates when heart is present, it is on the ventral side. For human beings also, we have a heart on the ventral side. So, this B is not our answer. C, presence of notochord in adult. In adult, in the case of vertebrates, notochord is replaced into a vertebral column. So, this is our answer. Option C. This is a wrong character. So, our answer will be option C. And option D, presence of kidneys or fins or limbs. That is a feature of... Uh, Vertebrates. So, correct answer option C here. Right. Moving on to our next question. Match the following. So, here you should have an idea about uh, different organs found in animals. Water vascular system, where it is present. It is applicable for echinoderms. 
Okay, it is a system helping for transport of materials. It will also help in respiration and also it will help in locomotion in them. Radula, it is a fine like rasping organ found in which group? In mollusca. Then malpigeon tubules, mal sorry, nephridia first of all. Third one, nephridia, it is applicable for annelids. It is helping for excretion. Malpigeon tubules again for excretion in arthropods. Proboscis gland, it is found in hemichordata group. You know, hemichordates, uh, they are now a separate phylum. Previously, they were a subphylum under chordata group. Now, we have moved them out of chordata and we are considering them as a, as a separate phylum here. So, coming to the next slide, we have a diagram of water vascular system and uh, radula shown here. Now, coming to the question, our answer will be 1S, 2R, then what about third one? Nephridia, Nephridia annelida. So 3P, then malpigeon tubules for arthropoda, 4Q, and proboscis gland will be hem hemichordata for hemichordata. So answer will be option B here. Right? Now coming to next mass the following question again. You should have a clear idea about the classification of uh, echinoderms. So different echinoderms are shown here in this picture. Starfishes, brittle saw, sea lily, cucumbers, echinoderms. So, Asteroidea is the group of starfishes. Echinodea is the group of echino, uh, echinus. Then, Cucumeria. Then, uh, there is a group of uh, sea cucumbers. Okay. Then, sea lilies are also the. So, we will move on to the next slide. Brittle stars are, uh, are also the. So, we have the slide here. When you match Asterias with the starfish, Echinus with a sea urchin, Antiton, Antiton with sea lily, Ophiura with a brittle star, and Cucumaria with a sea cucumber. So, which is our correct answer? Which is our correct answer? Okay, think well. Our answer will be option D here. You are right. Our answer is option D. We move on to our next question. Characteristic feature of uh, arthropoda is which is a characteristic feature of arthropoda. We have discussed it earlier. All arthropods are having two main characters. The two main features of arthropods are what are they? They have metamoric segmentation, they have exoskeleton of uh, chitin, and also they have jointed appendages. These three features are applicable for all arthropods, but bilateral symmetry and a pair of wings. Sometimes uh, you can give this character for insecta. A pair of wings applicable for insecta only here. Then triploblastic bilateral symmetry and abdominal appendages. Uh, abdominal appendages uh, you can give for other groups, not for uh, all the groups of phylum arthropoda. Then acylomate with radial symmetry. Again, you cannot give this character for phylum arthropoda. So answer will be option B here. So here a typical body plan of arthropod is given. This is actually an insect with the head, thorax and abdomen. So don't think that all arthropods are having this body division. It is different. It is different in different classes of phylum arthropoda. Now we move on to the next slide. Characteristic feature of arthropoda is, which is the characteristic feature of phylum arthropoda? Phylum arthropoda is having metamoric segmentation, exoskeleton and jointed appendages. So answer B, already we have discussed it. So this was only a reminder. Now we move on to the next slide. This is actually the last slide, last question for you. The body plan of sponge is given below. Identify the parts labeled in the sequence of uh, quanocyte, amoebocyte, ostia, spongiosteel and osculum. So when you go to the explanation, here we have the two diagrams here. One is the sponge and the other is uh, the quanocyte or collar cells. You know, quanocytes or collar cells are lining the sponge or seal in the case of all sponges. And it will help in movement of uh, water and other nutrients. So here, you can see an outer epidermis with the pinacocytes and an inner endodermis with the quanocytes. So coming back to this question, you can see here the correct answer. Quanocyte, uh, it is marked as R. Then S is actually the amoebocyte. 
and T here that is the ostial opening then P here that is osculum okay and what is Q here spongio C spongio C so the correct answer will be option osculum is the last one okay we have to identify the regions in the correct sequence so osculum is the last one or P should be in the last portion so our answer is option C here am I right yes C option is the correct one R for quanocyte S for amoebocyte and uh, T for our osteal opening then Q for spongocele and P for osculum am I right so with this question we conclude today's live session and we will meet with another topic tomorrow and until then it's goodbye from Stephen classes